زين يجي لما وصل لا زين ونقول له شكرا لك يا راشد من المتحدث اليوم معنا؟ المتحدث اليوم معنا بيكون عبد الله ابو علي عبد الله ابو علي بيكلمنا عن ال 180 درجه زين خلونا نشوف عبد الله ابو علي ولا ترى شو 180 يتكلم عنها يلا I'm proud to be here on the stage on TEDx It's one of my actual dreams and I can now finally scratch this off my bucket list <laughs> So first of all you might be wondering about my title which is 180 degrees I'm hoping that after I'm done with my presentation you can tell answer that for me All right So before I start You need to know who am I I am a 19 year old currently studying at Zaid University. At the same time, in Zaid University, I teach students at the program called the Peer Assistant Leaders. Which means, after hours, not during school, uh, university times, after hours, I teach stud uh, students up till uh, 1 a.m. So, at least I'm not out doing something wrong. <laughs> and also, in Zaid University, I'm writing an undergraduate research paper on improving, uh, improving education by the use of gamification. So, also in my free time, I like to film make. I just came back from London two days ago. So, if I mess up, I'm blaming it on jet lag. <laughs> so, also, uh, uh, other than filmmaking, I like to um, uh, uh, develop mobile applications. Yes, as a hobby, not someone having a gun on me. That's actually my passion. So, before I got to all that, you guys need to know about my beginning. In high school, I was none of this. If I brought myself from high school and I told him, you're going to be speaking on the stage under TEDx, I'll be laughing at myself. Because when I was in high school, I was a disappointment to my family and to a lot of my teachers and friends. I used to sleep in class, not know, and I'd go from first period to second period or third, and I wouldn't even know what's going on. And at times when I'm actually trying to, to study and learn and ask a teacher for help, the, te the teacher would push me off, thinking that, oh, this person is just going to be sleeping, he's going to fail, there's no point in me giving anything to him. So that hurt me a lot. And other than being a failure in front of my teachers, it was being a failure to my parents. I'm pretty sure you guys know about disappointment and how much it sucks to disappoint someone you really care about. So I wanted to change that. So in, in the next stage of my life, when I went into university, I said, enough of this. Instead, I'm just going to accelerate. And so I challenged myself to study stuff that is usually given to students that are in second and third year. But before even starting this challenge, I didn't know where to start. So I decided to email the dean of the university. The dean of the university is usually a pretty big guy in the university. He has a high status in the university. And I'm just a freshman at that stage. Not even freshman, maybe even first semester. So I didn't know where to start, so I decided to email him. And I actually have the email that I used. Yeah. So that's actually email to Dr. Leon Jalolian, who I don't think I'll be on the stage without him. So thank him. I'd like to thank him very much. In the email, it's just very brief, me introducing myself and asking him to, that I want to learn. Very basic. So I didn't know what to expect. I mean, there were three things that I think were, uh, back in my head when I sent the email that would have happened. One, he would totally ignore it. Second, that, okay, he's going to send me a, a vague reply without giving me any information. And third, I'd be expelled from the university for emailing the dean. So, yeah, that was my actual things that were going through my head. But the same day, I actually got this email that he wants to meet me. I got scared. I mean, the dean wants to meet me. I thought I was in trouble or something. But when I actually went into the meeting, the first thing he told me was, what do you want to do? And I just told him that about my challenge, that I want to challenge myself, that I want to learn before everyone, that I'm really interested and I don't want to waste my time. And he's like, okay, you don't want to waste your time? Fine, let's go with this. So he told me to come back after a week so he can prepare something for me. And the thing that he prepared for me was to make an app for the Dubai police. And my face turned into this. My, that's my face, because in front of him, I just hold my face like that, because how can I make an app for the Dubai police when I have nothing, no knowledge, nothing yet? So he told me that it's fine, I'll help you. I'm not going to let you drown. And he did that, exactly that. He helped me out, and after one month, 
I actually finished my app. The, the app is supposed to help the Dubai police and figure out if someone messed, messed up with the, some of their vehicle identification numbers. And, le and I'm so happy that it works perfectly. And then after that, I noticed that, that the door opened for me. I, I finally realized that no, I'm not what the teachers thought I was, that I can do so much more. So I started going and applying to the peer assistant leader program. I started doing the undergraduate research because if I messed up in high school, I don't want anyone else to mess up, which is the purpose of my research, not to just sit there idly. And as a teacher and the peer assistant leader, not only that I, was I voted the best pal during that semester, but I was also the in-demand. The in-demand pal award is given to is given to those who are ta who taught the most throughout the whole semester, and I'm so happy to say that I actually got that award. And then, uh, what I thought, what I, what I started thinking about, uh, if I messed up, and I got this chance, I'm worried that other people will not get the same chance as me. So I started thinking about how can I help the teachers. They're, I can't just sit there idly. And one of the things that came up is exactly how we evaluate teachers in university. We need to evaluate our high school teachers even more thoroughly. So that's the idea, evaluating the teachers. If you know, in university, you start at the end of the semester, you evaluate the teacher on everything. Not only their teaching method, the content, and the, their teaching method, and everything else that has to do with their teaching. So I thought about implementing this into a high school. And so far, I'm, I'm still undergoing the, the research of trying to figure out a high school that is going to be OK with this. But the, the, the idea is, if we evaluate the teachers, it's going to stop being a one-way communication. It's not going to be just the teacher talking to the student, and the student gets the grade, and that's it. No. It has to be the teacher talking to the student, and the student telling them that, hey, there's something wrong here. We're not understanding it, and you didn't explain it better. Or your teaching methods are really they, they really need to get, uh, you really need to work on them. So the idea is pretty much helping the teachers to help the students. Because if we don't help our teachers, they'll think that they're doing a pretty good job. And that's my mistake, that I, that I didn't speak up, I didn't tell them anything. So they, I'm guessing they just thought that they were doing a pretty good job and I'm just a flop. So that's what I started to think about. And after a while, it did actually work. In the university, I, I started doing a research specifically on some professors and I noticed that after they get their uh, their evaluation they actually perform better and they change their style and that really needs to change because they, we can't just keep having students fail and not knowing why we need to hear their voice out so this was my actual ending slide when I wanted to uh, end my slide when I wanted to end my presentation before I even started I was I had this a moment of silence due to the students we lost due to the flaws of current education. That's very depressing and I really do not believe that anymore. This can't be it. I cannot just give up on my fellow students. I cannot give up on my fellow teachers. So I came up with this. That change is possible even in the darkest of places. You just got to remember to turn on the light. And I really believe that the people who can turn on our light is our beloved teachers. Thank you very much.